In this video, we're going to talk about Webpack. Webpack is a module bundler, very similar to Gulp or Grunt. Webpack is a lot more powerful in that it allows hot module reload. So I can show you how that looks like in the video, but for now, let's start by installing Webpack to the computer. So if you have npm and node installed, all you have to do is type npm install webpack. I will make, some, make that global. So since I already have it installed, I'm just going to start an empty project with a npm in this script. Or if you want, you can clone it from the link in the description for this empty boilerplate so you can follow along much easier. So let's go over this uh, repository. Let's start by looking at the package JSON. Here you can see some of the dependencies that I set up for this boilerplate. It contains some SAS loaders, CSS loaders, and a Webpack dev server. Don't worry about that right now, I'll explain it later. And just for the hell of it, I added in ES6 support. So you can start writing ES6 style code right now. So a thing with Webpack is it needs a configuration in order to tell it what it should do when we start the server. So we have a starting script in npm here that tells it to use node to run server.js. So let's go over server.js and see what that is. Server.js starts a Webpack dev server. This server will look at the files in a certain directory and then hot loads it in to your browser. It starts a local server basically, and then loading your assets. As we can see, it requires a configuration file called webpack.config. So let's look at that. So this is the basic Webpack configuration file for most projects. I'll go over it briefly. In Webpack, you have to tell it an entry point where you want your project to start in. So it will start looking at that file, in our case it's called index, and then whatever this file depends on, it will start recursively run through the tree and then include them all together automatically. So our entry point in this development uh, boilerplate contains our hot low servers and the dev server. So just you need to put them in right now and then define a port for it. In my case, it's 1337. And then you define the starting entry point, which is inside source, scripts, and index.js. We'll take a look at that later. The output section defines where you want the file to be outputted. This is a file that will be processed by Webpack and then after it finds all the dependent files, it will bundle it together into one file. So in this case, we call it bundle.js and it will live in static folder. This section is the module section. This is probably the most important section of this configuration file. In this section, you define what type of loaders you will need to handle for specific file types. So for example, this line here says for all the JS for all the files that end in .js extension, we will use the Babel loader, which is the ES6 transpiler uh, uh, plugin for Webpack. And then you tell it what directory you want this module, this um, loader to look at and transform the files. So this saying, we want to look at all the JS files inside the source directory and then apply the Babel transformation to it. Same thing for SAS and CSS files. In this case, we're looking for all the SAS files and then apply the loaders for SAS, CSS, and then include the source map. And we wanted to look at this path. And then for plugin section, this is some of the basic plugins where you Will, will where Webpack will do hot reloads. So just include them in like this right now. 
So, this is the basic Webpack configuration file. Let's look at our folder structure. So, we put all of our source codes inside the source folder. And as you can see, I have some sample JS files and then some sample CSS files. Since we want the entry point to be index.js, let's look at this file and see what it looks like. So this is the end index.js. As you can see, you could do both ES6 style import or the common JS require on the client side. And then this thing here tells it that the entry point for all the CSS lives in this file. So all this file does is it tells it the user in the console that the index is loaded and the sum is sum. Now what is sum? Sum is an insert variable imported from this file, which is sum.js. Let's take a look at that. So sum.js requires another module. So this is to demonstrate the dependency, in, uh, dependency management that Webpack helps you do. So index we, we depends on sum.js, and sum.js depends on add.js which is this one. So all add.js does is it exports the function sum, which it returns the sum of two values. So inside sum.js, we now have the function called add. So we can just call add. It's, this will do add 5 point plus 4, and then save it to a variable called sum. And then this module will export the value of sum, in which index now takes it from. So if we did it correctly, sum will now equals to 9. So index loaded, the sum is, it should say 9. And here it does another function called greet. So greet is it's a common JS require from this JS file called greet.js. Let's take a look at that. So all greet does is export this string called greetings from greet.js. So if we do alerts, this string, it should say, is your alert the message greetings from greets.js. And lastly, the SAS require. So we can tell Webpack that this our application looks for this SAS base file. So let's look at that. So this is a simple SAS file. It imports the color that SAS, and then it sets a background to a color and the color of the text to something. And it, it, it depends on this color of the SAS file, which is very simple. So now we have everything all set up and we can start the server by doing npm starts and it will start the server JS. Let's do that. Now there's an error in here. Ah, so I changed the name to something. Um, it used to be Webpack Boilerplate. So let's just do that. So Webpack now looks for all the files and create dependencies and then starts the server. As you can see, immediately our server starts and uh, our web page loaded. So this is, if we did it correctly, if you look at the console, it says index loaded, the sum is 9. As you can see, it applies CSS styles directly to the files. If you look at the HTML index, we basically include the bundled JS and it starts to load them in. Now a really cool feature of Webpack is that it allows you to instantly update your server without pressing the refresh button. So let's do a example. Let's say for greeting, I want to say something else. Instead of greeting from JS, let's say hello world. Now with the Webpack server running, all I, have, all I have to do is press save on this file and see what happens. As you can see, this page automatically reloaded with the latest code in our repository. So. Let's look at index the sum is nine. Instead of saying sum, let's instead of adding the two file two values, let's subtract the values. So let's go to here, go to sum.js, 
brightness since it depends on the add JS. Instead of adding the two values, let's subtract the values. Press save. And the server reloaded. As you can see, the, the sum is now 1. So Webpack makes it extremely easy for you to develop your application. You will develop your application in a much, much quicker time than with other module bundlers. Oh, and you can also do it with SAS too. Let's say I want the text color to be yellow. Press save. And this server automatically updated to yellow. It's really, really cool. Let's change the background color to black. As you can see, immediately it updates. So this is the boilerplate for a dev server. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to export those files that we have in the configuration file. As how do we input this bundle.js, which is the minified JS, into the production server? So you can have a folder, let's say, you know, public. And then this is where all your minified JS and minified CS SAS, I mean, SAS, CSS files will live in. So we'll see you next time.